Now, this is an interesting uh, uh, chart from NASA that uh, I, I took from, from the website uh, of NASA, and uh, they talk about uh, capabilities of measurement for various types of sensors. Now, you see, we talk about piezoresistive. You recall piezoresistive, it's a, it's a wire, I stretch it, resistance changes, but the resistance changes with temperature. So I might have basically a cross sensitivity of the sensor that might not be regarded properly and I could do wrong interpretation. Moreover, lately sensors, piezo resistors, are made in silicon with impurities. I use a membrane of silicon and you know, a high density of boron uh, 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 impurity into the silicon will make the resistor make the piezo resistor. The, the fact is that the gain factor is higher, it's much higher for silicon. The only point is that in high temperatures, the, this, the, I say the impurities will drop into the surface. If we talk about thin membranes, and we call, recall I, I discussed about silicon on insulator, and the, this, uh, the resistors are done on the silicon, and I use the insulator and silicon as a membrane, and that would, would probably work properly up to 250 degrees or even 300 degrees on the diffusion in lateral direction. So. Electric resistance, but not in integrated circuit technology. That means uh, we talk about platinum wire or copper wires or whatever. They could op op operate up to about 350 degrees, like thermal resistors, right? They could operate at higher temperature, but you have to have uh, the appropriate charts. Is electric for uh, natural crystals, they, they are operating up to 700 degrees, but properly about 550, this is what you know, it's, uh, was available at that time on the market. Conventional fiber optic, we talk about conventional fiber optic in glass, not on plastic. It's fiber optic, most of it is made in plastic, right? So. Uh, on glass, 600 degrees, and sapphire, 900. Now, interesting enough, uh, lately I, I saw publications on sapphire. They report, you know, going to 1,200. Um, they, they, I mean, probably in certain conditions that has to be seriously investigated, but to my knowledge, there is no product operating at temp that temperature. You probably you, you know better than I do for that. You, certainly, you, you, there are machines, there are units that have gone experimentally to close to that, so that endurance device you be closer to 900. 900, that would be the end. And now you see from here on, although the application is up here, we have nothing. <coughs> so there is a need. There is no market because things like that, we built six probably in a decade, right? Like this probably a few hundreds. That took not too many for uh, 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 making a business case for a sensor developer to invest, I don't know, $20 million or 50 or 150 on a new technology, completely new technology. <coughs> um, <coughs> so technology referred for various means are based on uh, fabrication sequences. That consists of deposition, patterning and etching removal. And again, deposition, patterning, removal. That is a, a standard uh, method of building MEMS surface technology. We have two types of technology. We'll discuss immediately after that. <coughs> Traditional MEMS technology is performed on silicon substrate. Now, this has been, you know, a baby powder with silicon on insulator or as I say, uh, case Western research years ago, they offered silicon carbide on silicon. So they deposited silicon carbide. It's very expensive to, to build weight of the silicon carbide. But they put a, a layer of silicon carbide on silicon, and they, you know, uh, develop their technology. Keep in mind, it's possible to build exactly on the silicon components of silicon carbide. The point is that there was no interest in doing that. No market was no drive, was no pull. But it is possible. So, uh, the substrates for 
can be silicon wool phase easily. One cell, I mean, when you oxidize silicon, you put it in a, in a uh, reactor and you go at 1,150 degrees and you keep it there and you take out the, the wafer, it's no, nothing happens. I mean, mechanically, it remains uh, cell. The point is that electrically, it doesn't perform. Mechanically, it's, it's okay, it works okay. Up to 900, there, there is no softening of the material. It's a bad form. <coughs> now, this technology that uh, I'll just present briefly today would be Nanson silicon. Just a, a brief view. You, you might know lots of things about it. Nothing depends on your field of uh, business. Nanson silicon on insulator. Nanson silicon carbide. Silicon carbide nitride. This is uh, really new. Silicon carbide nitride and alloys. Stintronics. This is the electronics of single electron. So uh, we'll, we'll get in there. Optical MEMS. Talk about signal transmission. A brief, you know, uh, 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 I should say, discussion on what would be available within the next uh, few years. MEMS packaging. That uh, what I want to, to put in here is the fact that it's still very, very at the very beginning. What happens? Any manufacturer is focusing on a product, they say, oh, package later on. But it doesn't matter. But when the packaging comes and they have to sell, your package doesn't matter how. So there is no interest, there is no research. Research doesn't pay for me to work in packaging. There's a publish probably one paper every two years. What, what would I show you there? Thermal heat exchange or, I mean, it's not a big deal. So that's why there is very little uh, advancement in packaging is what I mean. And uh, probably one or another, or another technology, laser spectroscopy, that starts to catch up a lot in bio uh, medicine. Maybe. Question. Um, packaging, doesn't the military drive anything much anymore? The military, they do, do the same packaging, but on ceramic material. It's absolutely the same technology, same uh, uh, bonding, same as in you know, commercial packaging, they are made in, in uh, plastics. But it's made in ceramic, because that ceramic will you know, uh, dissipate the heat, or what doesn't accept the heat from the outside. So for thermal purposes, mainly. But it's too expensive. It's very expensive indeed, because the demand is low. I mean, it will be 400 components or 800, and that's it. And for that, you have to put a light back. You have to put 10 people working on that. It's expensive. It's that's why there is no, no real progress on that. Uh, years ago, I, I spoke with somebody <coughs> in uh, uh, Motorola, and they say, we, we know how to do packaging. We just pay no attention to that. We know, but we, it's, it's minor. We have other concerns. Right? So uh, about MEMS silicon technology, if we can clearly say, Oh, integrated circuits, how oh, do we make them since 1975 or the earlier, right? The first patent was uh, uh, Fairchild 1959. So that was the first integrated surface machine electronics. Now, NEMS, if, if electronics is mature, we can't say the same thing about NEMS, because there are many advancements every, I should say, week or so. You see a new technology, a new approach, a new, uh, a new progress on that. So, uh, however, it's ongoing towards maturation. Because the things are, you know, well established. There are um, facilities that are usually used by multiple users. Why is that? <coughs> okay, when, when I build a, a circuit, an electronic circuit, usually I want those chips, and they are identical on the wafer. I align them identical one next to the other. The point is that when I do MEMS, and I, I don't have such a large demand for the components, what I'll do, I'll ask you to give me your design and put three of yours, two of yours, five of And when I make the, the you know, wafer, everybody should get this share. It's called multi-user approach, but this multi-user, they have to follow technology. You have something in mind, you have a design because you have a project, a custom, whatever. But I'll tell you. I can give you three layers of polysilicon on the top floor. That's it. I can't give you more than that. And the properties of the polysilicon is this. 
and you have to make it up from there. You can design something with those restrictions, those those restrictions are very serious and you know significant. So uh, uh, this silicon devices, you know, from resonator in your phone, you have to, everybody has a resonator and a, a frequency uh, in the phone. It's silicon. It's a mess. It's not any more uh, crystal or whatever quartz crystal. That was no kind of So uh, th it's, a, it's a radio frequency uh, device. And they could be, these devices could be very accurately trained. They, they work properly, extremely well. Right? What is the principle of fabrication in general? It's the following. As I say it's deposition, patterning, and etching or removal. <coughs> Assuming that I want to realize something like that. What is this? This would be on the surface of silicon. I raise a cantilever beam. Cantilever beam is some supported beam, you know. And this beam would be moving up and down if I move the, the support up and down. I mean, would move down and up from the inertia. Or would be, if it's subjected to some force, would be flat or... This structure of cantilever beam is very much used in sensing. So how I make this structure? So on the substrate, I deposit a layer that I pattern. This layer is called sacrificial. Why? Because at the end I'm going to sacrifice. To <coughs> then I deposit on the top of that my structure. How I deposit it? You might say usually the same way. I deposit the entire layer and then I pattern this shape. But when I pattern and I move metal, or polysilicon, what is in here, the chemical that will remove this material would not affect at all the substrate, the sacrificial. So the chemical, the chemistry of these reactions, they, they, they have to be well balanced. And this is what we say we have a stable process because we can control those things. Once this uh, structure is done and patterned, I could remove the sacrificial and I release the structure. The structure is now free. So that is the principle in general of building mass. Now if you want a cross-section, this is how the cross-section looks like. Sacrificial oxide in our case. Now my 10 micrometers is a bit not too much for oxide, but it's a different story. Let's just take it generally. And then deposit of the entire surface and remove. You might say, why is this notch in there? Because you saw if it snows on in the city and I have a humble bump somewhere or a hole, I'll see the hole in the morning. If the snow falls without storm or whatever, I'll see that uh, you know notch in the snow because the, the thickness of the snow will be uniform. So this is the significance of this notch. Material goes in here and more or less this will be it's not like that would be a little bit more, uh, uh, I should say, rounder or whatever, but this is that in principle the, the idea. This, you know, because the metal would stick on the substrate, this pattern or this area is called an anchor. We anchor the surface or the structure on the substrate. Right? <coughs> that is.